Um, my name is Pat McLaughlin. I'm the chief for the Vermont State Hazardous Materials Response Team, and I have with me uh, here Mike Cannon, who is the program manager and chief for the Vermont Urban Search and Rescue Team, as well as the uh, statewide program manager for the Swift Water Response. Um, so we're going to go through some uh, items that the Division of Fire Safety, the State Fire Marshal's Office, uh, has to offer, as well as the Hazmat Team, and uh, we'll uh, end it with uh, Mike and his assets. So next slide, please, Emily. So Division of Fire Safety, uh, we uh, mainly in our normal duties are uh, doing code enforcement, um, building inspections, plan review, uh, and then the HAZMAT team, as well as the USAR team and the Vermont State Fire Academy. Next slide, please. Uh, we do offer a special uh, operations section within our Division of Fire Safety at the State Fire Marshal's Office. Uh, these personnel are able to go out into the field and uh, assist local municipalities with disaster inspections, uh, reviewing uh, buildings that may have been damaged uh, uh, by floodwaters, uh, trees down, things of that nature, uh, working with the State Emergency Operations Center um, in uh, picking up different missions. Um, we do uh, are available 24-7, 365 days a year uh, by contacting the Vermont Emergency Management Watch Officer um, at their 1-800 number. And then you can ask for uh, to speak with uh, the watch officer who can get in touch with uh, one of the state fire marshals um, to assist your local municipality. Next slide, please. Uh, we also run in larger scale um, when we have several inspectors out doing uh, different inspections um, and uh, other um, duties. Um, we have our Fire Safety Operations Center. It's more of a coordination uh, center for being the ability to uh, remove some of the um, who's where, what's going on uh, type deals from the SEOC so they can, um, a person, the uh, partner member at the SUC, so they can focus on more of the big picture items um, and working uh, towards uh, collecting that data and bringing it uh, to decision makers. Uh, but we can preside, uh, provide several different uh, functions uh, through there just to be able to coordinate our assets uh, more efficiently. Next slide, please. Um, and then those are those positions that are going to come out and do different inspections, look at buildings. Uh, those teams can provide uh, different kinds of inspections, so spot inspections to um, specific uh, technical inspections. Um, the USAR team also has engineers that are available that we've deployed. Uh, and smaller incidences like structure fires where we have a downtown building that maybe have a potential for a collapse. So maybe it's not a large scale flood or a big uh, incident, but just a small item where we can send uh, an engineer to look at something. Uh, but during those flooding incidences, we have several buildings and getting uh, someone with a, uh, a PA out to uh, look at those buildings and see uh, what the threat is to the other buildings and what the danger might be for those people to get in. The State Fire Marshal's Office is able to provide that to the local municipalities. Next slide, please. So those are the rapid building inspections I talked about. We uh, utilize a national system uh, for uh, three uh, um, different types of um, building safe uh, standards. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, those three, those three sites would be unsafe, limited entry, and inspected. So the inspected buildings are the ones that uh, maybe had some minor flood damage, but are are safe to be able to go in. Um, and it just shows that we we were there, we looked at it, um, and we don't have to come back at it. Limited entry ones are the ones that may have some some issues. Maybe there's uh, stairs that are falling off. Uh, maybe there's a, a washed out wall on, on half of the building, and it's still okay to get in, but it needs some significant work before it's uh, okay to occupy. And then we have our unsafe buildings that are just unsafe to go in. Maybe they're missing more than one wall. Uh, maybe there's some kind of leak or a spill in the basement. Um, those are the buildings we want to make sure that we have uh, on our list and they've been looked at by our engineer and that uh, everyone knows that those buildings are the unsafe buildings for entry. So these are some of the documents you may see on uh, when we come out and, and label um, and assist your municipality or local agency with inspections across the, the state. Next slide, please. Uh, the after Irene, um, the uh, legislature passed uh, amendments uh, to Title 24 and gave authority to health officers, fire marshals, uh, zoning administrators to declare and condemn buildings uh, destroyed. Now, the caveat to that uh, amendment uh, and the powers uh, only come when there is a documented um, uh, 
declaration from the governor's office of a declaration of emergency. Those powers do not stand for regular buildings or when they're normally standing. These are specific powers for properties, condemnation orders for when there is a state declaration of um, emergency and those buildings are uh, really unsafe for um, occupancy and need to be removed. Um, so these are very specific powers uh, under Title 24 and they're given to the health officers, the fire marshals and the zoning administrators uh, and if there are non missile building house uh, inspectors uh, to issue this document, which is available on our website to be able to fill out and uh, record that uh, as as is. Um, so just know that the powers are very limited, uh, but when they, they are there for your use in an emergency. Next slide, please. Uh, so we also coordinate a lot with the uh, Red Cross and making sure that shelters are OK uh, to be housed. A lot of the Red Cross shelters are known locations and we uh, are able to um, have those on a rolling list and we, we're well aware of those locations and have uh, make sure that those have CO detection, smoke detection, proper egressing. Uh, but sometimes when we uh, have a disaster, those shelters get hit as well as in the disaster. And so we need to move and be a little fluid. So we pick up and we go to a different location. And so you may see one of our fire marshals coming out just to make sure that if it's going to be an overnight uh, shelter, that our inspectors are making sure that there is smoke detection, that there is uh, proper egressing, um, and that the people that are staying there after the disaster are not going to come into another disaster um, and uh, be hurt in the area they're staying. So you may see our inspectors out looking, working with the Red Cross for local municipalities in regards to sheltering requirements uh, in a natural disaster. Next slide, please. Uh, the MARC is uh, something we work with uh, multiple agencies to kind of bring together post-disaster to try to deliver as much information about how they can collect this information, how they can get reports so they can file reports with FEMA. Um, and we've had a couple of these in Swanton uh, was the last time we ran one, um, and it was able to uh, give a lot of information to the uh, agencies um, and um, homeowners that were affected by the, the issues uh, that happened in that, that community. Um, and it just uh, come, brings together something after the incident, after everyone's kind of gone home, uh, all the emergency has ended. Our uh, public education section uh, works to kind of provide the information that they may need to get back up on their feet. Next slide, please. The Department of Public Safety also and the state police also have the fire um, explosion in investigation unit. Um, this unit uh, works 24-7, 365 during the year investigating fires uh, and is requested by the local fire chief uh, for cause and origin. The statute has that the fire chief per the municipality is the responsible party to, to figure out cause and origin. And this team provides that technical assistance, education in the skill set and equipment to come and assist the local fire departments in figuring out uh, uh, cause and origin. And a lot of those uh, significant fires, uh, line of duty death fires, um, occupancy deaths, injuries, um, maybe uh, multiple, maybe multiple building fires, those really large fires. And sometimes just trying to figure out why a smaller fire started so that this team is available 24 7 to local fire departments um, year round, um, even when there's a flooding incident. Next slide, please. So the Vermont State Hazmat Team, uh, that's where my bucket sits, uh, and I sit most of the time. Uh, I am the Chief of the State Hazmat Team. We have a 30 person uh, membership, we have four stations across the state. One in Colchester, one in Pittsford, one in Putney, and one in Barnet, each with a truck that's able to respond and personnel uh, trained to the technician level and hazardous materials response. We responded to 129 calls last year. Of those 129 incidences, we responded 44 times out in the field to assist local agencies in mitigation of the hazardous um, substance. We train once a month. Uh, and we're available 24/7, 365. We have our own watch officer, our own crew chief that's on call that communicates with the VEM watch officer. So if your local municipality needs assistance in a hazardous materials incident, you're, feel free to call the 1-800-641-5005. You'll speak with the Westminster dispatcher who's able to connect you directly with one of the VEM watch officers. If you need to report the spill or if you need the technical assistance or response from the team, you can get connected directly to the Vermont State Hazardous Materials Response Team crew chief that is on call. We work uh, with the commander as, an, as, a, uh, as a branch underneath them um, and provide them that technical assistance uh, to mitigate hazardous materials. 
And with that, I believe the next slide goes over to Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for everybody tuning in. Um, Vermont Urban Search and Rescue Task Force. We are a 90 person team um, and we bring a variety of specialty training and tools to bear should a local incident commander uh, request our services. Uh, we are housed in Colchester. We have uh, 16 vehicles and trailers that we respond with across the state. A few things that we can offer during a flood, uh, flood event or an ice jam would be um, our technical search capability that include the ability to access people that may be trapped due to floodwaters. We offer uh, unmanned aerial vehicles or drones that can be used to hastily and safely search for people that are trapped or um, access um, areas where, where we might not be able to access by boat or a vehicle. Um, other capabilities that the team uh, possesses are the ability to search wide areas with a large number of people that we have. Uh, we are able to bring uh, search canines, specialty equipment such as search cameras, um, a variety of boats and UTVs to assist the local municipality. Uh, as Patrick mentioned, we do have uh, three structural engineers on our team. Um, that are available to assist in building assessment, whether it be a large scale event or even um, one or two buildings that might have been impacted. Next slide. Our task force has a rather robust swift water uh, flood capability. These um, assets can be pre-deployed to an area of high risk uh, prior to the event unfolding. Um, our team has swift water boats embedded within our own group um, that can be divided up into a number of smaller teams uh, that can fan out across multiple uh, municipalities that may be affected by floodwaters. Um, the task force also coordinates um, about 10 other partner agencies um, that have varying levels of water rescue capability, and those resources can also be pre-deployed or pre-staged in high-risk areas. Um, it's through these partnerships and memorandums of understanding that we have access to about 25 um, swift water flood uh, boat teams that can be activated through Vermont Emergency Management through their watch officer. Um, and these, again, can all be pre-staged and pre-deployed prior to a flood event. And that ends my two slides. Thanks much, Mike. Um, so. Our uh, regional offices for the Division of Fire Safety State Fire Marshal's Office um, are, uh, are displayed on um, the screen now. We have four regional offices, the B Waterbury office, I apologize, we just changed that last year. I should have that by, down by now, is the green section. Uh, the blue section is our Rutland office. Uh, the grayish or brownish color is the Williston office and the purple section is our Springfield office. Each one of those has a jurisdictional area where there's fire marshals, plumbing inspectors, electrical inspectors, as well as our plan reviewers um, in those offices. Um, and then as Cannon had stated, he's got uh, um, and myself uh, share an office up at the uh, Colchester station uh, for emergency response, as well as the uh, Fire Academy in Pittsford, uh, where my truck two is staged. And then we have an agreement with two local fire departments in Barnet and uh, Putney uh, to uh, house my other two trucks. Um, this information is also available on our website, which is firesafety.vermont.gov, um, and we have an interactive map there so you can see which fire marshal is uh, attached to which town as well and their contact information if you had any specific questions regarding any specific towns. Next slide, please. And with that, that uh, concludes our presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. If there's something you think of afterwards, both Mike and myself have state email addresses. Mine is patrick.mclaughlin at vermont.gov and Cannon's is michael.cannon at vermont.gov. Thanks very much, and we'll turn it back to Emily. Thank you so much. There was a question that was both asked and answered in the chat, so I'll verbalize it just for the good of the order. The question was, is the Vermont Hazmat team volunteers or are they full-time staff? And the answer is it is part-time temporary state employees for both the Hazmat team and the USAR team, and uh, McLaughlin and Cannon are the only two full-time members. <laughs>